Hello everyone and welcome to some Mr. FPGA news. This week, we will be talking about the DE10 Nano clone, the Tap2 project, new arcade cores, and more. Also, check out my channel sponsor, Mr. Add-ons, a place where you can get all your Mr. needs. Things like full Mr. setups, IO boards, accessories, and more. Now let's get to the news. There is now an INI option to specify an alternate main binary for the Mr. FPGA. This is useful if you are testing unreleased updates that require a new Mr. binary. It is recommended to use this option on a per core basis. One useful example for this option would have been when gun con support was being developed. It required an alternate main binary file that would cause some wireless functions to be disabled. Having only specific cores use the GunCon binary file would have been very helpful. Groovy Mister also requires an alternate main binary, so it's helpful to have Groovy Mister automatically switch to its required binary. Also, official updates to main that are in unstable builds can also be more easily tested with this new option. The way you would specify a core to use a new binary would be like this. In the Mr. INI file, at the bottom of it, add a line with the name of the core surrounded by square brackets. Then underneath that line, add main equals and the name of the binary file you want to use. You can also add other standard INI options here that will only affect that specific core. While I haven't tried this yet, it looks like you can still have the option to use this on the regular INI section. I'll use the alternate binary across all cores. Useful if you are using projects like Spark 2K06 alternate binary that integrates tap to support. Read-only Memo did an interview regarding the in-development DE10 Nano clone. Most of the information is already known, but some new info I read was, Taki Uran contacted Altera, the makers of the Cyclone FPGA directly, to get the best possible pricing on the FPGA chips. A cheap cart console is planned, and this new device might be released within two months. Check out the interview for the full details. Later in the week, Taki posted more information on the board after more testing time. This is what has been verified to work. Direct video, HDMI resolution of 2048 by 1536, VGA, snack, and 3.5 millimeter audio on the analog I.O. board, and the USB hub. Things that still need to be tested are real-time clock and the digital I.O. board with dual RAM setup. Other useful information Taki posted was keeping the USB micro port and add USB power holes. He says that this fixes any jank slash reuse of existing shells, keeping the USB A port and add power hole. It's great to see regular updates of this board. Taki later posted about pricing for the planned handle and depending on consumer interest, it can cost from $125 to $150. It was also teased that the console version is going to have a huge feature that will take up the bulk of the cost and make us say, Shut up and take my money! What do you think that feature would be? If I had to guess, it probably might be modular cartridge ports where we can use our own physical games. Ario Aces developed some new templates for Tap2 NFC cards. One template is a 0 MHz DOS collection for PC DOS game. Another template is in the style of the Genesis Red Box. You can see different templates for Sega CD, 32X, Genesis, and Game Gear. I love the way these templates are coming out adding a lot of flair when using Tap2 with Mr. Wizzle also created an official site for Tap2 called Tap2 Wiki. It's still in progress, but it's meant to be a one-stop shop for guides, photos of builds, and more. You can sign up for an account to be able to edit. And if you're looking to use the NFC cards like you would a TurboGrafx U card, Bedroom Ninja has some NFC engine cases back in stock. If you don't know what the Tap2 project is, it is a way of allowing you to use NFC tags and cards to launch games. For example, on the Sonic 3 NFC template in this image, I can encode that NFC card with the game info and when I tap the card onto a reader connected to the Mr. FPGA, it will launch the game. A new arcade game has been released by the Coinop Collection team. That game is Techie Packy, a falling block puzzle game reminiscent of Tetris and Puyo Puyo. You can obtain the core from the public Patreon post by Attract17. If you are willing to do some compiling, you can test out the work in progress Irem M107 arcade core by Martin Donlin. The hardware only ran three games, a vertically scrolling shooter called Aerosol, 
and two soccer games, Dream Soccer 94 and World PK Soccer. Some Konami games draw black frames around the image, making the viewable area smaller than expected. There have been modifications done to Hotego's JT frame framework that can remove these frames on a per game basis. Some games affected by this are Vendetta and The Simpsons. Outrun had some small graphical glitches fixed. These glitches include flickering tail lights that eventually turn gray. Also, a thin blue line on the left side of the screen when selecting music track was fixed. Karate Champ Versus can now be played with four joysticks. This will make playing the game more accurate because the real arcade cabinet had two joysticks for each player. And in Solar Retro Gaming's Toki Core, a wrong PCM sound pitch was fixed. Several Sega System 18 games are booting up in the upcoming JTS 18 core. However, an unexpected issue was discovered regarding the VDP chip implementations available. This VDP chip is the same one as Sega's Genesis console. And the implementations from the older Genesis core and the newer Mega Drive core have been tested with the System 18 core. So more work has to be done to figure out the issue. Without the VDP chip, you can expect graphical glitches in games that make use of it. Otego also poses an interesting question regarding using Netlist to create FPGA cores. One issue that may arise is that Netlist are basically the original design of hardware with minimal changes. So using them may have legal ramifications since you won't be creating a clean room reverse engineer design. The new Mega Drive core is largely a Netlist of a Mega Drive board. So that's why Hotego poses this question. There are other issues regarding Netlist that are detailed in the Patreon post. So that's it for this episode. I provided links to all my sources in the description. Make sure you also check out RetroRTV.com to see my Mr. News videos in blog form and to get more retro related content. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you can get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time.